And the last question, which is always asked all the time, is when are you going full time? And if you did go full time now, could you survive on what you made on eBay? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm John Luke, the reselling white boy, and welcome back to another video. If you are new around here on my channel, I'm a part time reseller on eBay. I'm looking to go full time in the future, currently working out of my shed. So, today's video, I did prompt it on Instagram and Facebook. I'm doing a question and answer video, so you ask and I answer. So I'm going to answer some questions about eBay, business, posting, etc. Some personal questions. Yeah, just get to know me a little bit more. Before we get into the video today, I just want to let you know we do have a new Sunday live chat on James Collect's channel. It's called The Sunday Waffle. It did air last Sunday and it was really, really fun. So yeah, it'd be great to see you there next Sunday. I'm assuming this video won't do as well as like the car boot videos, the chat shop videos and the sales videos. It's a little bit different, a little bit more personal, but I thank you for tuning in. Before we get going, hit that like button, show the love and I will do one of these again in the future. Because you guys watching this today, I'm assuming you're more like, more here for me just as well as like the eBay stuff as well. So I appreciate your hair, but I want to get your views uh, on something. So over the next few weeks, I want to rebrand the channel. Um, it's not going to change the content in any way at all, but I want to rebrand like the name and like the logos and stuff like that. So obviously it's the reselling white boy at the minute. I've got like four or five options brewing up in the uh, in the air at the minute and I just want to see what you guys think. Leave a comment down below which one you'd rather see. So we've got number one, we have got Happy Days Reseller. Yep, so basically it's the name of the Facebook group. That's like the brand I'm trying to build anyway. Happy Days Resellers. So yeah, Happy Days Reseller is number one. Second one would be Happy Days Reselling. So just Happy Days Reselling. So very different, very similar, sorry, but uh, a little bit different. So like George has got George Ross Retro Reselling. It might be John Luke, Happy Days Reselling, something like that. The next one would be Happy Days John Luke. So it'd be just Happy Days and my name, Happy Days John Luke. And the last two don't really include the Happy Days tag. Uh, one is just my name, John Luke, or John Luke Resells. And then the next one, the last one that I was thinking of, Ricky did actually come to me with this one, Ricky Lee Reselling on YouTube. And he came forward with JL Resells. And I know there's a couple of people on Instagram with like JLL Resells, JL Resells and stuff. So it's quite a common name, but yeah, for the channel and stuff, what would you guys think of JL Resells? So it'd be like, hey guys, I'm John Luke from JL Resells. It will be a little different, uh, but yeah, I want to try and grow as a brand and as a channel. I get quite a few people asking, oh, what's the name about? What's the name about? Like, with like a racist undertone or something like that. I don't want to associate my channel with anything like that, uh, as it doesn't mean that at all. So yeah, I want to switch it up, rebrand. I'm going to get some professional logos. Uh, I've got a designer that's going to cook something up, hopefully soon, once we get a name sorted. And I'm really looking forward to rebranding and sharing it with you guys. I'm planning on getting a channel design, logo, uh, header and everything like that. And then one for the Facebook group as well. So the Happy Days resellers will, will kit the Facebook group out as well. So yeah, any ideas you have for the logo, little bits that you'd like to see inside the logo, uh, let me know down below. So yeah, there's about five or six ideas in the air at the minute. Hit me down below in the comments, which is your favorite. Upvote the ones that you're voting for too. I'll kind of get a gist for what you guys are choosing. So enough of that waffle, we're we'll getting into some questions now. So you ask and I answer. These questions are from Instagram and Facebook mainly. So the Happy Days Reseller group, I put a post out and Instagram, I put a post out as well. Uh, links for the Instagram and the Facebook are both down below. So these are in random order, I've not really planned them so it's like exponentially gets harder or easier. I've literally just put them down as the order as I read them in. I had screenshots from last week when I asked the question, so let's get right into it. The first question is from at Freddy.79 on Instagram and he asks, would I ever do wholesale? The answer to that is yes, 100%. As you've seen over the last six months on my channel, I think I've been around for like five, six months now. I've done a lot of RA, I've always bought in bulk, like, you know, different toys, figures, games, etc. And wholesale just takes it to a whole nother level. At the moment for me, I don't think wholesale is the way to go. I'm just trying to build my business up and just gain some momentum. In two, three years, I'll definitely start to integrate wholesale into the business. And then you could probably put the main bulk of your business over to that side. But at the minute, I'm going to stick through and through with my eBay and my Depop. Just smashing out the secondhand gear. But I've still got lots and lots of retail arbitrage that I've been selling for months and months. So the short answer is yes, wholesale is in the works one day. At Icon Ion on Instagram or Iconian on Instagram. He asks, how do I decide to sell something individually or in a bundle? For this, if I say I bought something in a bundle, I'd probably be looking to break it down. Um, if you went on the car boot, picked up a big bundle of something, you know, you could research every single thing individually. 
figure out, right, is that worth selling on its own? Is it three pounds, you know, all in, four pounds all in? If it is, you're gonna end up bundling that gear. But if it's something, you know, it's getting seven, eight, nine pounds for like a game, then you're gonna start selling it individually. For example, when I picked up those little transformers from BNN, I think I paid about one pound fifty a unit, and I sold the bundle of three, so it cost me four pounds fifty. Um, I think I sold the bundle fee for twenty two forty nine, something like that. So yeah, if I would have sold those individually, I would have been selling for like seven, eight pounds. But I'll be paying postage on each individual order. So you got to figure out if you're going to be saving on postage by bundling the gear. If you are selling in bundles quite a lot. It could be down to the fact that the items you are selling just aren't worth that much so you're trying to bundle them together for a better price. So sometimes if you are selling like a, a bundle all the time, you want to try and reevaluate your business plan a little bit, try and get some better products in and then be able to sell them individually then. I do understand though bundling can work a treat sometimes, so like some wrestling figures bundle, I, you know I'm always for that. If they don't sell for more than four, five, six pounds each uh, on the roam, like all in, they're gonna go in a bundle. You get like a bundle of eight to ten figures for like twenty or quid. That's the best way of selling them. But yeah, in some cases you want to be trying to break the bundles down and sell them individually. This one's from at the flip room on Instagram. Great guy. I would follow him on Instagram. Really cool, upbeat guy. He did ask for a video idea of the five year plan, so I just thought I'd throw it in to the question and answers for now, just as a short little brief summary of like my five year plan. Get rich. I'm only joking. That would be great, wouldn't it? With each year, we want to be building on the business. So that might be the amount of listings, the amount of money coming in, the amount of sales you've got. Is it the average sale price? It could be the idea that I want to kind of bring my listings down, but bring the quality of items up. So really expensive items on the store, um, not taking up a great deal of space because they're expensive items and there's not many of them. So yeah, I think um, some resellers operate about 150 to 200 listings. In them cases, they are selling really high quality items and getting really good value. At the minute, I'm floating around 200 items, but I really want to push past 300, 400, 500. And I want to take this in like three month stages and just really start to plow through those listings. I do know Peter the Vinegar Jar, he floats to about 500 listings. I want to try and get up to that kind of level in terms of uh, active listings on eBay. I know this in terms of the five year plan, it doesn't mean too much. But you've got to look at it in many ways. Uh, I want to be still be doing eBay in five years. It'd be a lot better if I was doing a lot of brand new stuff as well, like wholesale stuff. That would be fantastic. And also here's delving in a lot of wholesale stuff at the minute. In doing so, you're going to reduce the time on secondhand gear. So, you know, I still go to the boot sales, still go to the charity shops. But I don't want to try and shift the business a little bit more so it's proactive, you know, it's replenishable stock. So yeah, that is the five year plan really. I don't I don't see myself in Dubai in five years. I still want to be, I don't know if I'm still in the shed in five years. I, you know, I'll probably, hopefully yeah, outgrow the shed within five years. Who knows what's going to happen in five years. But I just want to take each day as it comes and grow the business day by day. If I make a small step every day for the next five years, I'm sure I'll be in a good place in five years. And that's the main thing. At prelove.selling on Instagram asked what postal service do I use for my items? So anything over a large letter, so literally my large letters are my letters obviously, go with Royal Mail, straight into the post box and they're pre-printed on eBay. On my parcels, so anything above a large letter, I know people do small parcels with Royal Mail as well, but I tend to use uh, parcel to go and I normally use Hermes for everything above a large letter. If you have not used parcel to go before, it is great, so parcel to the number two go.com and it's like a compare the market for postal services you link your ebay account in so all your sold items comes up you can get the cheapest quotes then but yeah hermes is usually the uh, cheapest on there anything you know that's obscure uh, in size or you know location i could use a different service then but mainly royal mail for my large letters and hermes for anything above i have just realized this video is going to go on quite a long time i've still got a ton of questions wrote down so I might split this into two parts, I'll record this one, see how you guys like it, and then we'll return for some more questions. I have got plenty down here, I'm not going to be able to cover them all. But we'll keep going, got one or two left, and then we'll uh, close out the video. At MTS Reselling on Instagram, ask me what is the most recent reseller I've been watching on YouTube at the moment. Shout out to MTS by the way, awesome guy. See him in the chats every single week. But in terms of the newest reseller I'd say I'd watch is probably Ricky Lee. I know he's been around for a couple of months now. Um, we do live shows every Sunday now. He's been on the Wednesday show before. Uh, we've become really good friends. But I'd say he's the most recent one that I'm watching consistently. There's people that I've been watching here and there. But uh, in terms of, you know, religiously watching a video, probably Ricky Lee at the moment. 
Titch on Facebook asked if I keep records for items I don't have receipts for. So this might be car boots, charity shop. Well, not charity shops, car boots, basically. Um, so where you're not getting receipts. And the answer is yes. I'd keep a spreadsheet of everything from that boot sale uh, and have it all written down how much I paid for it, the item. And I've got my videos as well, which is kind of like a backup kind of log uh, from the car boot videos. It literally shows me buying it for each money. So that's kind of like a video log of what I've actually um, paid at the car boot. But yeah, I do have a spreadsheet for all my boot sale pickups, which I can't have receipts for. So the second to last question today is from Molly on the Facebook group. She said, what made you get into reselling? First things first, I always loved car boot sales and charity shops, picking up some random bits and bobs for myself. I always had my own little stall on the car boot alongside my mum and dad selling my own toys. So it's kind of instilled in me from a young age to be a seller, to be a buyer. It just became a habit as a, as a young kid. Like I'd always be looking on eBay and certain things and I'd be sending my dad links of stuff I wanted for Christmas and it would be an eBay link, it would be an Argos catalogue circle. It would literally be an eBay link. So yeah, it's just how I've been brought up. And then when I was in college, I came across the YouTube channels like Ben Fitzpatrick, Nick, Zaheer, stuff like that. Just fell in love with it kind of thing. Always loved the boot sales, just sweets, um, how I looked at things and then, you know, booted up an eBay account. At the time, I was working about Wednesday night after college and weekends as well as a lifeguard. So basically, it was good money. It's, you know, it's good money for a student. Um, I had, you know, I didn't have a lot of time for myself, but I did the eBay on the side, did that. And it kind of kept me afloat. I, I like buying clothes and I like doing nice things. So it kind of, you know, kept me going in that regard. But as like, a, as I left school and got a job, I never really asked my parents for anything um, anymore. So I didn't ask, oh, can I have £20 for this night out or £50 for this night out where, you know, some of my friends would get £100 for the night. I know it's not special working for yourself and earning your own money, but I just didn't feel the need to ask my parents for it anymore. Um, because, the, you know, they paid for me for like the last 16 years before that. So yeah, it's only a nice thing to do to fend for yourself. And the last question, which is always asked all the time, is when are you going full time? And if you did go full time now, could you survive on what you made on eBay? That question was from Charlie on Facebook. So if I went full time now on eBay, dropped my job, and really grafted my butt off Monday to Friday, really got into gear, I could definitely do it, yeah. I think the thing for me is just dropping it and doing it. Um, I'm gonna drop to three, two days at work and ease my way in instead of cutting it off, cutting off the supply chain and just fending for myself. At the minute, I've got a 350 pound car payment going out. I've got phone bills, etc., etc. Other little bits, insurances, you know, probably about over 600 pounds a month going out um, on a, that day, gone. That work life covers that. And then the eBay is just growing itself and itself and itself. It's just going up and up. And that's kind of, gathering momentum on its own. I'm not taking too much out of the business at the moment. So when I go full time, I'm gonna be having to take out at least six, 700 pounds just to pay those bills. And then, you know, leisure, you know, I like buying clothes, I like doing nice things. So that you, you probably put another 600 pound in that kind of category as well. How I'd be looking at it is, I wanna take 1200 pound out on a certain day every month. And you know, how much is left to reinvest in stock, to put aside for taxes, to pay for postage and you know all these kinds of things that are going to be going to have to be paid so as i see it over the next six to 12 months the business continues to rise as i drop my work days and it's got to try and outweigh the work and then shoot off into the sky it's not a really great analogy to be honest <laughs> but yeah that's how i see it i want to be able to take 1200 pound a month out of the business and that business still to thrive for me to still be able to invest in really good stock and the sales to come in. The time, obviously the time, them 30 hours a week that I do at work, they'll be fantastic for the eBay and the YouTube, you know? I'll be able to create more content, I'll be able to sell a lot more gear, do a lot more listing and have a lot more time. But it's just making that jump and I think I'm gonna have a slow jump, you know, that's a slow jump. You know, some people can just jump off and land on the two feet. I just wanna make sure that everything is gonna be right when I do do it. So the intros for now is still, I'm a part-time reseller looking to go full-time in the future. This time in 12 months, touch wood, that'll be different. Anyway guys, I hope you did enjoy today's video. A little bit of a different one, a little bit more personal one, getting into my head a little bit, answering some questions that are asked all the time, but it's nice to get some answers for you guys. If you did enjoy the video and you wanna see a part two, hit the like button, hit subscribe of course, leave a comment down below of some questions for next time. Also guys, this week on One to One Wednesdays, 
if this video comes out before then. I've got Vinny, Mr. G, UK reseller, uh, who owns his own shop down in Cornwall. That'll be a really great chat, so it'd be good to see you in there on Wednesday at half past eight. And then this Sunday, we are back for the Sunday Waffle on James Collect's channel. On there, we've got our car boot pickups and just a load of fun with the chat. On the first show last Sunday, we was getting in about 80 viewers for the first show, so we was really pleased and it was really great to see your guys' support. So finally, guys, I've been myself, you guys have been yourselves, and we'll see you very, very soon. Take care. Peace.